Morning all. i um, going to talk about how to ensure low EMFs coming from your computer. And I had a urgent email come in this morning um, about the SIFIC meeting saying, please, basically, please, can you include uh, tablets as well? Because many, many people now just use tablets, particularly while they're going away on holiday um, um, and want to know how to get low EMFs from a tablet as well. And of course, it that's closely related. So first off, I'm going to talk about screens. Principal problem with screens was twofold. One is if you don't have reduced blue light before you go to bed, it keeps you awake. And it's all very well researched and it's to do with your sleep sleep hormones that don't get produced if you've got bright blue light and so you don't sleep so um but it's very good to have lots of blue light um, first thing in the day it wakes you up makes you makes you concentrate and keeps you awake and all that kind of stuff so lots of blue light in the morning lots of red and brown light in the evening and there's software um there's software um and many, many makes of it now. And I think it's included automatically in the Apple one or, or later versions of the operating system where you can set it so that it will do that for you. So that when you're watching your screen uh, later at night, um, it's better to um, better to have software like f.lux, f.lux. I'll just write that down. f.lux so install f.lux um i think it's free um or, or uh, some windows for any other windows version there's a lot of them around now um that will will do that for you so that's really quite important so your colors change in your screen during the day and that applies to tablets as much as it does um computer screens. And actually, it's another reason for using a computer screen instead of an ordinary TV. Ordinary TVs tend to be smart now, and that means that they are Wi-Fi transmitters. Um, and it can be difficult some, on some of them, on Samsung's, um, when you plug in an Ethernet cable in the back, it switches the, the Wi-Fi off. But otherwise, you've got that. And also, the Samsung's actually listening to uh, like the the Google devices, um, listening to your conversations and and snooping on you all the time. So better to have a computer screen that isn't doing that. Hopefully, um, I'm no doubt webcams will try, but um, so um, and I need to do security as another as another topic sometime on your computer. But right now it's it's about reducing EMFs. And um, so you need to make sure that just like on your phone, um, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are disabled, are switched off in, in your settings. Um, and then, um, get the color right on the on the screen now the key on the, the next important thing on the screen is flicker so either at 50 hertz or sometimes 100 hertz the thing the the screen generate blasts new images at you and um the technology behind the brightness is that it can be that that they extend the length of the light pulse and what that means is there's there's a light pulse and there's a gap and there's a light a light pulse and then a gap and so on and the brighter you have it the smaller the smaller the gap and the more longer time you've got got light emitted from things so that it gives the overall impression and the average higher average so but there is a lot of technology around and many screens are what's called flicker free so they don't do that they don't adjust their brightness um by flickering um, and so the very important thing to have is a flicker free screen plenty around easy to find 
probably even secondhand. So flicker free screen. So that's that that's the screen done with also the angle of it um, ergonomically should be um, at the right height so that you're you're sitting you're sitting comfortably and means that you sit up straight while you're looking you're looking at the screen. Um, so um, that's where it is a disadvantage with a laptop in that you tend to be rather set where it is and you can get laptop stands that lift the screen up. Anyway, with a laptop, um, you should never ever use the, your hands on the keyboard or the laptop as they are normally intended. Um, and the reason for that is that there is a spinning disc under your left hand with a very powerful magnetic field, which uh, um, uh, affects your blood quite badly. Um, and that goes all around your body. Um, so have an extra keyboard. They're really cheap. You know, 10 quid buys you a good one. Um, and you plug a, US, a USB wired keyboard um, and you plug that in. So you have a separate keyboard from um, your laptop um, and obviously a desktop has its keyboard um, of itself anyway. So um, now the power supply to both your laptop and the internal one in your desktop or tower or whatever you want to call it um, can produce pretty high voltages on, on the chassis. Um, and um, you need to strap that voltage, that floating voltage from the power supply down to, to earth. And that means, um, and you do that with um, one of our beneficial environments, um, computer earthing cable. And you can use that computer earthing cable, a very simple device where um, there's an ordinary 13 amp plug and the, just the earth terminal is connected to the outside of a, a USB, a USB-A, the old uh, rectangular um, metal sheath that you plug in. Um, and that should be connected to earth. And that will bring the earth from your cabling and your keyboard and your mouse <coughs> down, down, down to earth voltage. And if you, as I, as I do, have an earthing mat, again, available on our website, but many, many other places too, um, and have your feet or, or you sit on, your, uh, on, a, on an earthed, uh, earthing mat, and that means that your, your whole body, your skin, is down to this voltage. And if there's no voltage between, no voltage difference between your hand and the keyboard or mouse, uh, electronics inside, it means that there's nothing to drive the dirty electricity frequencies, which are then uh, detrimental to your health. Uh, and those don't come into your bodies and your body, and it gives you far more time on the computer before you get tired and, and, and so on. Um, very simple, but very, very effective and very important. Um, the other thing about it, EMF, so that you need to have um, the internet connection, broadband connection delivered by Ethernet cabling, and but no, none of the other methods, the, the wireless methods. Mainly, obviously, Wi-Fi. So you need to make sure the Wi-Fi is switched off, and the Bluetooth is switched off. Um, recently, I was in a in a car, a relatively new car compared to my car, uh, with. Um, Bluetooth on on for connection to the phone. Oh, dear, oh dear, boy, did I have a headache. Um, so very important um, to um, to switch your your blue your Bluetooth off as as well as your Wi-Fi in your settings for your computer. And so that's that's that one. Um, On lap, so let's go over to tablets now. Um, tablets can be connected just like mobile phones can um, with Ethernet. And the operating system supports it automatically. You just plug Ethernet in, it works straight away. 
but you need to have a, a, a suitable, depending on your your own your own um, the actual device for the this connects into the tablet and and this connection on the end there and this particular one is a USB C but there are there's another couple of types that Apple use that you just need to identical everything here but just a different socket on the end or with a converter on the end as well you can get this if you want to use multiple devices um, and this of course has just got an Ethernet connection um, in the end there which you connected into your, into your modem. Now, if you design it carefully, um, it's a point I wanted to make that um, that earthing cable that we call a, a, a computer earthing cable can also be plugged into the back of your, or back of your modem. Very often there is a, um, a USB A socket in the back of the modem. You plug that in and it will earth the chassis of the modem, but also all the cables coming out of it. And providing they're of the right type that they connect the earth through. So that's a five, a five E, a six A, seven, um, are all connect the earthing through. Um, and that will earth then the chassis of your computer um, and your um uh and all the other devices on, on, on your network. Um, what you have to be careful of is that when you connect multiple devices like that, so you did another computer on the same, um, on the same network, there's, you, you get a massive induction loop, which means you get some fairly horrendous induced currents at 50 Hertz all, all around the network. So in some ways to have a, a cable which, the, which doesn't connect the earthing through, um, you might have to install that, just a short length of that to your device. Um, so that you don't have an induction loop. And if you have an induction loop, hasn't electrosensitive, you'd soon notice it. Um, so from user one, I have to remove Bluetooth drivers from laptop. Does that mean you've already moved, removed them or? you have to remove them, or you, you plan to. Um, even I, I, I would be very surprised if you had a Bluetooth driver there that he'd actually searched for devices, for appliances to connect to. Um, and if he said that means Bluetooth is basically on and searching. And so that means you've got a Bluetooth signal that you're working in. So you, you really need to stop that. Um, and so um, it's very simple to, uh, to stop the drivers, and you go into you go into the the settings part of your operating system in in Windows anyway, and you just disable the Bluetooth driver. Um, yeah, that's what you do. Um, I don't know why it happens, but we had to do that. Well, it's default that you have, unfortunately, in Windows that. Um, that Bluetooth and Wi-Fi assume people assume that you want them on. Um, so induction loops. Induction loops are really are really important. So um, induction loops. Um, so the, the most often place you find induction loops are on ring mains in houses. And therefore, if you're ever looking at rewiring houses. Make sure that you what call break the rings, um, and electricians are trained to do that. When whenever they have a, a wiring fault on on a ring, and they're uh, fairly common, um, they are in, they the standard procedure is to break the ring and then sort out two what's called radials. Uh, one one half of the ring that way, the other half of the ring the other way. Cut it in the middle and then redo the trip switches at the at the fuse box. Um, an induction loop, so it's a loop, so it's possible. So if you have one wire next to another wire, or most particularly if you've got something with a coil, so effectively you've got lots of wires by the side of one wire, so a transformer or something like that, 
and you've got like in a ring main the the current is free to go round and round and round it even if it's the the size of the whole house it will do and when you've got one transformer close to that one wire the live wire or the neutral wire um in the the ring main it will induce current 50 cycles a second currents around your wiring and most worryingly of course it's got all the dirty electricity frequencies too and one of them might be rather negative for health um and so the induction loop so you should only have ever have one path of of earth earthing and not and not not two or multiple connections you'll find you'll end up with induction loops and then you you will really feel that as as uh, as an electrosensitive sort of a little bit difficult to explain really um um could you please speak the induction loop can you get can get formed and the remedy i don't quite understand the remedy is to have separate paths to earth from from in different connections and don't have them able to connect up in it in uh, across other systems anyway so that's that's really the problem with with um earthing and and, and induction loops so they're really 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 important um I didn't finish um, the tablets. The tablets often work, work very similarly to mobile phones. And if you've got your mobile phone sorted out where you've got the ethernet connection uh, doing the um, via, it, it, doing the, the, the internet connection, then you can do just the same for almost all tablets. The key thing, though, is to make sure that it's it still keeps charging. Otherwise, you're going to real run out of run out of power, run out of battery fairly quickly because because you've got to power this extra extra connector, this extra adapter as well. And so, if get if you get the adapter with the right kind of compatible slot in the side for power that matches the um, power socket um, or yeah the uh, power and internet socket on your tablet or phone then it will keep charged so you carry around with with this you 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 need you need your ethernet wire and and you need a plug somewhere to uh, connect your your charger in okay so that that's that's really it so and all that should be worse it's 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 fairly straightforward it's just you've got to get used to um lugging around wire, wires so that you, could, you can actually connect. And it, li it limits the places where you can. But over time, um, people tend to work out that they some kind of connection where they tend to sit in the kitchen or dining room or most obviously, obviously, um, workspace. If you're going to use them at night, um, best um, if you want to watch a film um, while, you, while you go to sleep or something, then make sure that you're in battery only mode in your tablet or your computer, battery only mode, which means downloading the film or podcast or whatever um, before you go to bed. Um, and so that you're listening, you're listening to it. Um, you're listening to it in while it's just running and there's no, there's no external connection at all. And if you've got a meter, um, if, if you've got a, a microwave meter like a, a, an Acousticom or a Classic Two, or um, yeah, or, or any of the other small ones, um, then make sure it, it while you're getting used to it, while you're setting the whole thing up to make sure that uh, your tablet or phone, or your tablet phone or um, computer isn't radiating, um, then just just switch your meter on and, and, and check that it's nice and silent. Um, it also works in the car as well. If um, inc increasingly, I like to listen to my my car stereo doesn't have um, Bluetooth, but it it supports um, uh, cabling, phono phono plug uh, cabling, um, so that I can connect my phone to my my favourites in my Spotify and. Um, I can play that through through the car stereo, but I don't really want um, my phone in the enclosed semi-Faraday cage of the car, my phone radiating all, all the time. And therefore, it's very important that um, I download all the stuff I want to listen to 
um, beforehand, before I go on, on my car journey. Um, and it allows us electrosensitives to to keep up with all our family members who are listening to podcasts and all the other interesting stuff and good music and everything. So um, it, it's it, it's a it's a really good nice idea to do that. And I find that yeah, I'm moderately sensitive and uh, I can cope with um, my mobile phone just on on flight mode um, with playing pre-downloaded stuff through through the cast area. So it works really well. We're coming up to half time. So I'd like now to take, I'd like to now to take questions. What what do we have from the floor? Okay. My name's Pauline. Hello, uh, Pauline. Hi, Guy. Unfortunately, I missed the beginning of your talk today by about yeah. 10 minutes and it felt really cru crucial what you were talking about i it, where can i access this recording on your website because i've tried to access other recordings but i've had no luck <laughs> i've looked and looked but i couldn't find it very good question um so i i pass you over to sleepy shoulder now to paul okay thank All you right. Yes, um, you can access them on the website. Um, if you on the front page of the website, there's a, a little link at the top called EMF um, News. So if you click on that and the, on the first corner of that page that comes up, you will see the recording. They're also on the um, the Beneficial Environments YouTube site and Facebook page as well. So they're, they're all available on there. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. I'm really yeah. forward and, to catching up. And the website is Beneficial Environments. Yeah, I've got that one. Okay, good. Yeah. And also... Just the... to say, it'll probably be late late this afternoon when I, I put those up. So... Okay, then. Thank you. Okay. We're all, we're all very new to this, and Paul is getting quicker every week. Um, took us a... <laughs> It took us ages for the last one. You'd be amazed how ridiculously complicated all these simple things are anyway um but anyway so that's work anyway that's working better so um so i've got a question here thank you so adding the beneficial environments cuter earthing cable to the router the ethernet cables coming from there to computer devices for two, two people would not be a problem on top of the existing earth on my apple desktop mac mini or earthed plug on my NEC separate screen. Um, I'm not quite sure what the NEC separate screen is, but um, is that for your for your Apple? Presumably, then. Um, well, I think you've just got to suck it and see, to be honest. And it all depends on the detail connections in the um, any cables between any pieces of kit, um, depending on the the category of the Ethernet cables, um, and also um, how earthing is coped with on, for instance, your your um, your cables between your computer and your um, screen, and the screen cables are of two types. There's a digital one um, or an analog one. Um, and for when I first had the digital one, I really was affected by it, but I've got used to it now, and it's not so bad. Um, but um, yeah, the analog one can be better. So if you try an older type screen and an older type, rather large um, screen connecting cable, um, they can be they can be better. Um, it all depends on, on what frequencies that you, as an electrosensitive, are are sensitive to. And just as a general note, it does seem that the frequencies. The frequencies we're talking about, the dirty electricity frequencies, so as I've explained in previous things, as soon as you get a distorted uh, waveform by, from a from a power supply or any electronics you're dealing with, um, as particularly power electronics like um, solar panel inverters and also heat heat um, heat pumps um, are um, uh, put huge really powerful um, 
distort have have distorted waveforms and those mean that you've got um dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of different frequencies um coming out vast range uh, of frequencies so i had a strange thing once where um a, a customer's um sony tv you could hear 50 hertz hum on on my on my microwave meter so the power supply inside the tv was so distorted that it was producing 50 hertz microwave um it was pulsing at 50 hertz from the power supply even at microwave frequencies so it was going right from 50 hertz to whatever it is a gigahertz which is which is a thousand million um uh, cycles a second and very regularly in between them so there were literally thousands of different frequencies being irradiated at us from the tv um not much chance of close engagement it's not like you're having a hand around a mouse or a hand on a keyboard or anything you're well away from the tv so it probably didn't matter too much but nevertheless potentially um there is so i, I it could potentially affect us because of this thing called energy medicine, which I shall be going into um, in more depth later. So that the frequencies, so that simple, what sometimes um, all the simple shielding that I've been talking about actually um, isn't that effective. And that's because um, or people, people don't feel completely um, untriggered. They still feel sensitized by these systems, um, even though you've reduced the the, the bulk of the the heavy um, radiation from cell masks and things like that. People still feel affected by it, and it and, it, and it's due to resonances set up so that it, it's producing given frequencies, and sometimes these given frequencies are um, not healthy ones, and it's because. All of the systems in our body, where whichever nerve you're looking at, your eyes or your ears or spinal cord or whatever, have, 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 have pick up and resonate to certain frequencies. And actually, it's how that was an experiment done. Oh God, ages ago, something like 1800 or something, where they were looking at tissue samples in in a in a petri dish, and um, the particular tissue cut off a living animal, um, survived longer if they had a little piece of nerve connected. They left the nerve connection on. So what that means is that um, innovation or the, the action of the nerves connected to a particular tissue feeds into it um, various frequencies which keep, it, keep all life going. Um, and so these frequencies, if we pick up one of those life-giving frequencies and we resonate with it from from our electrical equipment it, it disturbs our biology seriously and um and particularly the electric sensitives we seem to have lost our ability to protect ourselves from those frequencies and um so there was it but there is all the thing that we are the canaries in the coal mine and by sorting our electromagnetic life out um we reduce that and therefore we we keep we keep going longer we're we're, we're protecting ourselves better than most other people are so um, there, there is a, behind all this suffering and pain and whatever else, brain fog and migraines and whatever. Um, there is some benefit, hopefully, at the other end. We, we live longer and we, we're, we're healthier for it. How many earthing cables you need? Um, um, one per unit. One per computer unit is the default way of doing it. Although theoretically, you should be able to do it with one just connected to the modem, but that relies on having really good earthing, earthing connections through all of the other stuff. And it's not clear, and it's not guaranteed that you will get that. So <clears throat> to make sure it works simply and all that stuff for each computer unit or, um, or tablet or um, um, phone, uh, now put, a, um, put an earthing cable on. That's how many you need. Um, yeah. Do you have any sense about why some people are more electrosensitive than others? 
well, um, I'm not really an expert in that field, but um, it's a bit like saying, why are some people more uh, chemically sensitive or, um, you know, food allergic than, than others? Um, it's something to do with the regulation of all of these different stimuli and frequencies and, and how our body copes with them and how, how, we defend, how we're defended against them. But they're all strongly linked. And um, I think that um, sorting out these, these frequencies, so there's a first level of, of protecting yourself, which is to get, is to do the shielding and everything. And that's the sort of basics. But then there's an next level, and that is getting the harmonics right. Um, and so that um, the first thing that you do for that is to plug in um, um, filters. And um, there are basic plug-in ones based on Stetz's original design, um, which is just basically, a, it's, in its simplest thing, is a capacitor. And capacitors are is an electrical electronic device which um, allows high frequency uh, through it, but low frequency not. And so that if you've got, um, you choose the right capacitor across the mains between live and neutral. Um, and what it will do is um, it will short out and therefore make disappear the higher frequencies. In other words, the dirty electricity frequency should all disappear. And the lower frequency stuff below three, kilohertz, whatever the basic power stuff, the um, 50 hertz powering the things, and plus the first few um, uh, harmonics. Um, and then the higher ones will be, will be filtered out. That's the very simplistic view. And um, there are all kinds of problems with that. Because fundamentally, you need to have the, the closer you can get the filter to the um, to the source of the dirty electricity, the better it works. Otherwise, you've got a filter trying to absorb the high frequencies. And, and if you've got the high frequency going through all the wiring between one and the other, you've got all of those frequencies which are being neutralized over here and being generated over here going through, going through your mains. So if you want to do, one thing I'm thinking of doing is a sort of dirty electricity survey and we, have had um we can source a whole range of different frequencies a whole range of different types of filters for particular situations so whether your filters you know, we were filters working on dirty electricity coming off coming off from your solar panels um and it's a set of filters for the for the direct current side coming off the the roof and there's another another set of filters um, much, much bigger and stronger um, for the main power, the 230 volt stuff, maybe at 30 amps, which is a huge current, um, um, to go through all of that strong filtration so that it comes out the other side nice and clean. Um, but it, all the little plug-in filters, the Stetz ones, like we do, we do something called, um, used to be made by Enfields, where we've got a special batch recently been made up, so they're in stock again. Um, and the advantage of the old Enfields DE2s compared to a lot of others that are on the market is that this has got a massive amount of safety and particularly overheating protection, because it is possible um, to overheat them. If you've got too much dirty electricity um, coming off, um, you, they can overheat. Um, and this has got protection in it to stop to stop that happening. Very, very important. Um, anyway, so those are now available on our website again. Um, I've seen films for sale, which you put on computer screens to reduce EMF emissions from the screen. Never tried this any good or not needed if you're, if you're earthing away from the screen. If you put an and you know, an EMF, EMF meter to the screen. Right up close to it, it's really high, but it falls off incredibly quickly. So uh, and unless you're, you know, visually impaired or something and have to be right, right close to the screen, if it's at a normal screen, which is almost a meter away, then I, I can't detect, well, the simple meter, 
I can't detect the electric field coming off it. And there's, uh, there's no magnetic things to do that. So at, at the first level, the first approximation, I don't believe there's a problem. Um, ultra sensitive people um, might well pick it up. And I'm not quite sure the screens, what I've seen is a kind of metal gauze, a bit like a sort of finer version of mosquito screen you, you see on Australian back doors. Um, uh, but you can you stick mount in front of the screen and then you earth that and that will get rid of the electric field but you lose some clarity or, or seriously amount of clarity of what what you're looking at and that might give you ice grain so i mean yeah why not so it could possibly help but um i've not seen the need to try one yet um Probably when they when they were old cathode ray tubes, the old green and green ones, and all that, the old tellies and stuff like that, had huge voltages coming off them, um, and quite, and some magnetic fields as well, um, and obviously new technology with um, the, all the the current flat screens um, are don't have the same problem. Um, Furthermore, I was no longer able to work as air crew. Instead, I became a simulator instructor. Um, I think, I think, Gibbsy, we, we may have met um, and uh, a few years back. Um, and um, I suspect the working environment was extremely rich in EMF radiation um, from massive electrical jacks and hundreds of mobile phones within a metal building. Indeed, yes, um, uh, very, very likely. Um, oh, we have met. Hi, oh, oh, can you hear me? All right. Hello, Gibson. Hi, yeah. hi. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, hi. We did. We did. We didn't actually meet, but we uh, we had a couple of conversations on the phone when I was looking to uh, work out what was going wrong, and I actually bought um, an AM10 and a few other things from you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, actually, I think you missed reading out the the earlier message that I I, I read I wrote, which I said. Um, I can comment on why some people become more electrosensitive. So, you know, this is just a theory, but myself and a friend, we both became electrosensitive after being chronically exposed to contaminated cabin air in an aeroplane. Yeah. And um, so I was perfectly right before that. And I think my friend was as well. Yeah. Um, and my suspicion is that overall bodily toxic load is a factor in becoming electrosensitive. I actually got myself really really seriously cleaned up with a massive detox protocol that i i worked out and implemented oh, okay a number of the problems that i had um one of which was um uh, uh sensitivity to things like nuts and things which i'd never had before actually went away so okay. as i got my body clean a lot of my symptoms disappeared so i just thought that might might potentially be a, a useful working hypothesis about why some people get more electrosensitive than others well okay well uh, uh, many many electrosensitives started with a um a, a particular catastrophic catastrophic event so i think the most famous electrosensitive in the world um was a very very famous woman who was prime minister i think she's still alive a, w prime minister of norway twice um and she then um, became a big cheese on the World Health Organization. And she actually, in her committee, defined the definition of the word sustainable. Um, she is a, um, a seriously famous person. And she, she had a situation where she had put a, a, a plate into a microwave, which was decorated with gold leaf. And what the microwave oven did was vaporize the gold with a bright big flash, which um, temporarily blinded her um, for about a month. She couldn't see. And then a, her vision came back. But after that, she was unable to tolerate a mobile phone in her office. So anybody going into her office had to switch their phone off. How extraordinary. Yeah. Michelle Marlowe, there's also a genetic element as 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 genetic things come into everything yes things go in families um so there's something i've had a very very urgent request somebody who has fallen on bad times so easy to do when you're electrosensitive 
and um, needs money to get her life back together just so that she can actually um, uh, the air tube thing. Well, I'll, I'll leave that till next week. The air tube thing is really important, critical actually. And um, so, so I'd like to start something up, um, maybe under ESUK if they if they want to do that. Um, uh, but the um, to so that we've got a, a a collection box for from us electrosensitives who who. Um, are still afloat financially um, can help those who, who aren't because there's there's no help out there you know electric sensitivity is, is not is not recognized medically by most doctors um, uh, properly anyway and let alone the benefit system um, and um, when people become financially troubled um, if 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 family can't help, if they depend on their family situation, if family can't help, they're really, really stuck. So what I'd like to do is to set up um, a an account in one of these websites. So if anyone can recommend um, a way of doing this, has had any experience of fundraising um, for these kinds of causes, um, I'd really like to um, get the benefit of of your saying and also how to administer it how on earth do you decide um who it goes to and why and all that kind of stuff um and it, and and also what about the ethical checks and all those kind of things and the the tax situation and all of those things and um it should be fairly easy but um um i've i've not done that i've i've, I've been a um a trustee of a charity um in the past, um, and um, uh, it's not too bad, but I don't, wouldn't want to register a charity. There are too many hoops to go through. Um, and also then the charity commission was also looking over your shoulder if they thought that electric sensitivity wasn't, a, um, because it's not medically recognized, this is not something that the char charity should be doing, um, is, um, is tricky. Um, so. Any, anybody got any ideas um, and um, on that? So um, um, I, haven't, oh, I haven't heard heard anything on that, but I'd really like to know what it, people please think about it for next week and I'd, I'd love your input. Anyway, um, and um, well, so next week, um, um, questions from what I've talked about today is really, really important. And I would, um, and there's a lot of practical, small practical issues with with dealing with that and in, in getting the earthing right on networks and, and, your, and your computer. Um, and I talked about screens as well. So any questions that people have, do, do email me during the week um, or put on this, on this mess this message messaging system here. Um, so uh, what we can cover next week is the importance of the air tube technology and headphones generally and using telephones too. Um, um, not many people know that in an ordinary headset like this, um, which affects me terribly, is that there's a there's an earpiece here. Um, and and like if you go into a into a theatre, you have many um, many theatres have this kind of uh, a loop. Um, it's an induction loop, actually, um, with, for old-fashioned hearing aids, so that you people with old-fashioned hearing aids can hear what's on the performance, the film, or the the, the play, or whatever. And um, that same technology is a, a hearing loop, an induction loop in here, so that all of the voice frequencies here, the audio frequencies. Um, are then radiated in into your brain, and for me, I find that really tiring. Um, and I have got some uh, solutions to that. And, um, one is yeah, anyway, whatever. So we, I, I, I can deal with that that next week. Um, there has been a successful benefits claim on the grounds of EHS, which is now unprecedented. 
Um, ESUK know about this case. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Um, yeah, the ESUK, and if you Google it, it's ES minus UK, or ES hyphen UK. Um, and um, they've got a brilliant website with, with tons and tons of resource on it. Um, and things like um, there's a GP um, who's got standard letters that he's written that you can give to your GP. Um, so, for instance, my my GP doesn't doesn't think that he has, that the left sensitivity is to quote him scientifically proven, and therefore he will have nothing to do with it. Um, which doesn't really help anyone, does it? Um, and so, um, yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah. All right. So look look at the website in, on ESUK. Um, Yes, um, on 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 air crew there was there was one particular aeroplane the the small four engine little one um, the one that that um, now King Charles um, um, had a a rather tricky sticky landing um, in I've forgotten what it was a BAC something anyway. <laughs> um, or the, the particular oil that was used in the engine leaked um, chemicals into the air in the cabin. And a BA-146, yes. And I, I don't want to, oh, the, uh, 757, really. Really, the big ones, wow. Um, so an awful lot of people travel an awful lot of miles in 757s. And so the 146 is usually just a short hop and you think, oh, well, you know, that won't matter, but 757, yeah, they can all poison people. So I'll watch out for 757s. I'll, I'll avoid those in future. Not that I fly that much, but when I do. Okay, well, so we're coming coming up to time. Um, so any, Paul, have you got any input for, for next week? Um, so we're going to be looking at um, using phones and using landline phones and... Um, um, and also um, um, headsets and earpieces. Absolutely. I'll, I'll get those invites uh, out as soon as possible. And I think all these little details in everybody's life make that difference. You know, it's just it's just a small incremental change all the time. So every meeting you do, Guy, then you're helping people just that tiny bit to improve their lives. And uh, I think, yeah, that will be a really useful meeting next week. Yeah, well, I've just spent, uh, you know, 20 years on electrosensitive and you do things incre incrementally and you you also uh, try new things all the time. Um, and also you forget to do other things um, and let them slip. Um, and so this it is it all comes under electromagnetic hygiene and it's as complicated and labor intensive and thought intensive as germ hygiene, really. It affects almost these days mm -hmm. in modern life, it affects almost everything. Um, you know, even if you go for a walk on a mountain, you, you can get badly irradiated by, by um, well, satellites and also all the, the radio beacons on, on, on the top of mountains. Actually, Guy, on that, on that um, subject, last week I went to walk on Truly Hill, which is a hill near Brighton, in, in, and it's got an old ra uh, World War II radar station on there that um, my partner's father helped to build, but is a really dangerous place to go to for um, uh, electro sense. It's still emitting. I used to live, I used to live in the, the village Upper Beading just below that. And ah. um, I used to regularly go up there, but I can't do it anymore. There's too much radiation. And, and actually from my flat here, you can see the, be you can see those beacons on the top of the downs from there. And they, if you walk from Devil's Dyke in, kind of towards them, um, there is a, there, you know, I get, I, I have usually have to turn back fairly quickly because I can't, I can't take the radiation. Yes. So wherever you, if the message is wherever you are, you've got to be careful. Um, for unfortunately these days, and so I mean, I spent, I spent many years, um, as an engineer in the car industry, um, trying to make cars safer. So I was doing modelling of cars crashing, you know, driving them in into a concrete wall at 30 miles an hour and so um 
and that has improved car safety. And there isn't one component in a car, the door handle, the clutch pedal, the petrol cap, the petrol tank, the chassis, the windscreen, whatever you're, whatever you're designing, you have to take safety into account. And so the, the electricity generating industry, um, the consumer electrical consumer products industry, and most of the telecoms industry, all need to adopt the same kind of things, have proper safety standards, proper safety testing that goes into all of the development and things have to be certified before they re they're released, just like cars are. And once they, if they, if and when they do that, and there'll be huge resistance because it cost, cost the industry a lot of money. But when that is done, I am a, I'm a firm believer, certainly, in, I mean, Cars will never be completely safe, but they're an awful lot safer than they were. And it will be the same for um, radio and um, mobile phones and using telephones and whatever, flying in aeroplanes. But, or the technology all exists um, to, to eradicate most of it. Um, and um, I really look forward now to, in this opening this big vista of energy medicine and all the, all these different frequencies and how to how to find good ones and how to avoid the bad ones ah say so do i feel any first electric cars actually that's an interesting question because um some of them terribly badly so early priuses like you get a, t a taxi ride in a prius Oh, within five minutes, I'm jelly. And it's kind of like, oh, I feel all wobbly and, you know, headaches coming on and all that kind of stuff. Um, but other cars, um, uh, so my, you know, my, my my stepson in Germany has, um, has a Kia, um, which isn't too bad. I've been an hour and a half journey in that and, it was, and including a charge. Um, it was sort of okay. It was sort of could... Yeah, it was always only one trip. Um, yes, yeah, so I was, yeah. Um, but I found that actually the, the levels, if you, um, in um, Tesla's, pretty good, generally speaking, except when you put them on charge and the main charging cable goes just down the back of the rear seat. So if you've got your, your beautiful little baby, that you, you know, it's your bundle of joy, you are you know, talk about leukemia uh trigger uh massive so tesla is not too bad but clear well away from them when you're charging run a mile um and also bmws don't seem to be too bad and i've not tried mercedes one question about earthing while using a laptop would that not attract de to my body Perfect question. Exactly feeds into my feeling about earthing. Is that earthing is marketed as being the answer to everything, and it's not. You've got to do it really because it's so powerful. Anything that's powerful, you've got to use carefully. And I thoroughly believe in earthing, and it, it's helped me enormously. And I sleep earthed every night, and I work earthed. And um, even when I'm using a laptop in the kitchen, um, that's earthed as well. Um, and But it's not quite so good because I'm not earthed when I'm using it in the kitchen. So I feel it a little bit. But the question is that you, if, if you earth your laptop, you need to be earthed. And if you are earthed in, while you're sleeping, you need to have another layer of earth layer on top of you as well as below you. you otherwise, um, you have electric fields, um, sometimes very strong, um, between your body and, and the, the electrically charged um, equipment all around you. Um, and it's not so much the basic 50, 50 hertz thing. It's the, it, it, it acts as a medium or a, a conduit for dirty electricity uh, frequencies to get into your body and that's what affects your health um so a question about earthing while using a laptop would that not attract d to my body uh yes if you're not prepared for it
and you need to take precautions and then it, then and then you are i knew someone who was so eager as they could not even use the defrost fan in their small petrol engine car well yeah and there's a reason for that and i what's the time um okay one this, this was the last question okay so what does the defrost fan do it's an electric motor an electric motor <laughs> so I, what kind of instrument would you carry out an emf server you call well i've done one on a very complicated one recently on a camper that i'm i'm that i'm the camper that i'm working on um so all my standard stuff, so um, a clamp ammeter, um, a, a microwave meter like the um, Classic 2, um, the um, um, a field meter from um, gigahertz, um, which does low frequency electric, low, low frequency magnetic um, as a start, and the clamp ammeter, and also then if you want to go into it properly, um, um, oscilloscopes, and you look at particularly um, the charging of the battery from the alternator. And at the back of the alternator is a thing called a voltage regulator. And we're talking about power supplies here. Um, we've been talking about which are basically an or inverter. So it's DC to AC and voltage change as well. And that's that's achieved by having an oscillator or a certain switch frequency, which then you play with the ele electronics, whichever electronics devices you plug in, components you plug into that actually change your output. And so what's off the back of the alternator is that you need to be charging at um, a little bit more than the battery voltage so that it, uh, it, it can push the power, the, the storage, the charge into it so you need to do it as say just a bit above the 12 volts i'm like 14 volts but the engine revs vary all the time and so and that means the voltage coming out the back of the alternator varies enormously and so that you have what's called a voltage regulator at the back there which is actually dc to dc um but just stabilize supposedly stabilizes the voltage but it does it's not at all stable it's really unstable and very very, very noisy indeed, all over the place, all the time as the car is going through the gears and all that kind of stuff. So it's um, very, very noisy indeed. And more than that, you've not only got the electric fields, which aren't very so strong because it's only nominally 12 volts, um, but you've got in the windings of the motors, because you've got really strong magnetic fields, and then, so you've got magnetic fields off the motor, which has got loads and loads of dirty noise in it from the alternator voltage regulator. So that's why they couldn't cope with that. And um, I'm working out a load of fil various sort of filters that can cope with the, the massive amounts of noise and the massive amounts of current coming out of the alternator to charge the battery. Because in this um, camper, the passenger seat, the passenger's feet are right over the top of the battery. So you, you're getting, <laughs> you're getting, I mean, you couldn't imagine a worse situation for inducing dirty electricity into, in, into a, a, a poor, unfortunate electrosensitive's feet and hence body. Anyway, so yeah, watch this space. We're still, we're still working. We've got some ideas um, and we're hopefully implementing them very soon. If you want, what I could do is do a, a session on how to do a survey. Well, probably quite useful. How, how to survey your own, your own environment, wouldn't it? I think, yeah, yeah. So and then that will, that will come out. And so then I can show you the different things that I use, um, including my soup, my wonder, I got a really wonderful new piece of kit, which is a bit nerdy, but it's a, uh, it's an oscilloscope that works with my laptop. So I get all the frequencies I need. And I, I, I've dealt with it before on this, but I love this instrument. You can really, you really see all the, all the frequencies you need to.
and also how well your filters are working. So, um, yeah, um, so time's gone. I'm, 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 I'm wittering on and um, it's always lovely. Thank you. Thank you for all your interest. Um, and we've had um, 30 people today, which is, is really good. And um, so the, the recording will be available from this afternoon. Thank you, Paul. Um, and Paul, thank you for thank you for arranging and organizing this. Um, and um, I never know quite what I'm going to say or what I talk about. It goes a bit random. Um, I hope it's OK. We got there in the end, Guy. We did. We did. Thank you very much. Yes. But another worrying thing this morning, like, you know, one minute to 11, there was, there was no one in the waiting room. We thought, oh, no, as the technology let us down again. But I think that was just the um, Zooms. Zoom's servers were just very slow this morning. Anyway, see uh, see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Okay, bye now.